So welcome to this unboxing video for the Turnergy, I guess you'd call it, Trooper, short course truck. Got this today in the post, couriered from uh, hobbyking.com. About 100 quid, They're not bad actually, quite a good price. I haven't opened it yet, it's still sealed I think. I haven't opened it anyway. But um, yeah, we'll get unboxing that in a sec. Also got a, a new steering servo for it as well. This is a, a cordless metal gear servo. £15 I think it costs, so it's actually a pretty good price. So this truck doesn't come with a uh, receiver, so you start with the RC system, yeah, it doesn't come with that. It comes with a brusher system and ESC though, and it's always run apart from it, you've got battery in it and go. And we've got in a cheapy, um, I don't know what this is, it, Obsima, is it? Yeah, Obsima radio system with that, was about 15 quid. I'll wait for a minute, uh, and I'll be running 3S Lycos on it. It's 2S and 3S compatible, so yeah, I'll be running that as a Turnergy Lycos there. I've had that for years now, both 3S. One's 2200, one is 3200. So not particularly high capacity really, but um, I'll probably invest in a better one anyway later on. More high capacity than a milliamp hour uh, I have an existing brusher system that I'm probably going to consider using as well in it. Um, this is a 10 turn, so it's not particularly quick, um, but it's 120 amps, so this is going to be a backup amp. These are only 35 amps in here, so I'm thinking they may need to use this anyway. So, you know, especially on 3S off-road, you know, in the thick grass and mud, it's going to burn out pretty quick or just, just get too hot, whatever, no heat and thermal cutout. Also, another thing to mention is they don't come with Dean's connectors. I know this I've been doing my research before this. As with the Phaser Pro here, the 120 amp, I've had to solder on a Dean's connector here, plug. Um, the same applies to this. I'm not sure what the connector is. I think it's something like an XT, XTA or something. I can't remember. A four millimeter bullet connector or something. I can't quite remember the actual name of it. it doesn't say on it what it, what connector it has. But anyway, let's go through some of the specs. We, we'll get into that later. I've got the soldering kit with me. I'll probably have to solder the, the power connector from this onto this. The ESC to use it. So let's put that out of the way for a minute. Some sticky pads just to stick it all down. Obviously, it needs the RC system sticking down. So let's have a look. Yeah, comes with a high torque steering servo. It needs a 2 or 3S LiPo. Um, a 2080 kb motor. It's not very high turn, but that's probably because it's um, they're, they're trying to save on. You know, expense and overheating and stuff like that because obviously the faster the motor goes the hotter it gets especially with a 3S in it uh, okay so let's ask this this is the box let's unbox it it's sealed yet so let's have a look then two little tacks here I've got to say though before I carry on this steering server is amazing quality the blue finish on it it's all metal casing Plastic top, a bit like the Traxxas sort of plastics on the top here, very similar colour and feel to it. Um, but the actual metal itself is, is really nice. I'll zoom in on that in a little while, we'll do a close up on the GoPro because it's such good quality. <laughs> so let's turn that up over now and take it off. Come on. There we go. Whoa, wow. It's a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be, actually. I've got to say. That is a big, big looking truck. That is very, very big. I can't get over the size of that truck. <laughs> That's a one tenth scale? Jesus. That's huge. It looks like a one eighth. It's bigger than my Hyper SS. Why are you bigger than, well the shell is anyway, but I guess it's the same size. Too much plastic on the on the shells. So we can take that off in a minute, the plastic peel. Let's have a look at this. Oh. See what I mean? That thing is huge. Thing is absolutely huge. There's all the decals for the shell. Just coming anything else there? Just an antenna tube for your 2.4 gigahertz. Not that long. What the hell? Well, I suppose if you want an AM system in it, then fair enough. That's all you get in the box. Just literally the truck and then this little decal pack here. Some of these decals are actually quite nice. What a say. Pretty cool. Good quality. Right, let's have a look. So take the shell off. Good quality clips on the shell. The shell isn't the best of quality. This needs some reinforcing, I can tell already, just from looking at it. It's too fragile, frail. It's going to snap and split. So I'll have to line that with tape or something inside or some sort of 
um, plastic, I think, just to sort of prevent it from, well, give it some strength as well. Obviously, cut some holes because you see the size of this thing. This is going to be a huge windbreak. It's going to catch everything. If you're if you're jumping and things, which I will be, and I'm off roading and stuff, you're going to catch some air. And this is going to just be a parachute. I mean, look at it. It's huge. Look how big that shell is. That's just going to. You're going to have to put some holes in the back, or I'll probably put some some holes here where the lights would go, and probably around the top here. Um, and I might even put an intake somewhere around here as well, just to help the cooling of the motor. But apart from that, wow! I've got to say, I'm pretty impressed with this truck. I've got to say that it's not bad at all. And that's actually not too bad. I mean, there we have it. It comes with a standard steering servo. I'll be swapping that anyway because it doesn't look very strong at all. As for, I mean, everything else though, I mean, you've got some sort of like carbon y cover on the top here rather than, a, you know, plastic. Um, you've got these side skirts which will obviously prevent damage to the motor mount and the, and the ESC and everything and the steering servo and I have to say I'm really impressed with how this motor is actually mounted it has like a it's hard to explain like a, like a mount system like it sits in like a, a tray like a, a, a sti an aluminium like system and then you, you bolt it down with allen key screws here or hex screws and then obviously it's like a, it's like a heat sink on top so that's actually a really nice design I'm actually quite impressed with that because Usually it holds it here, doesn't it? Like if you imagine conventional trucks, like it holds it about here. Um, it screws onto these little sort of holes on the faceplate here of the of the edge of the motor, and you've got the whole weight of the motor hanging from that that like a pivot, and it's just not strong enough. You know, think about something you can do sort of 10 foot, 15, 20 foot jumps with these things, and they're going to need some support if they're going to be jumping that high. You know, these motors are going to snap out pretty quick. Okay, so yeah, this is nice, nice system. Um, one thing to note, I mean, I've, there's a lot of travel there. Um, that isn't probably supposed to be as wobbly as that, I've got to say. Not happy with how that is, because, you know, you want to go in a straight line, it's not going to be as wobbly like that, you know? Nice tyre quality, very soft rubber, very, very, I mean, look, look, really soft rubber, you know, not, it's not a firm type at all. Good solid bumpers. It has a centre differential here, um, a little bit like the hypers and the, the HPI stuff, you know, like uh, most four-wheel drive 1.8 scales have. So you've got basically you can hold the rear wheels and the front wheel free road run, but that means that these two would be doing all the work. And same for the reverse, or it'll be one or the other. So same thing again. You can hold these two, hold these two, and I believe it's diagonally as well. So if you hold these two. Yeah, you see only those two are turning. So which means you've always got, effectively, it's a four-wheel differential, but it's always two-wheel drive. No matter which two get the most grip, so, yeah. Pretty good, you've got these side skirts, like I said, you've got a tray at the side here for the battery. Um, you've got a nice looking uh, drive shaft here in the center. It has two drive shafts, it has like a mini shaft here, which is kind of reinforced with like a cooling thing on it, like a, almost like a heat sink. I don't know what it is. And then uh, you've got a second drive shaft here for like the, the rear wheels and stuff like that. Um, the bottom of it is all metal, or aluminium. You can see that. I still don't know why they give access to the spur gear. Um, it's not a nitro truck, you're not trying to uh, start a box. You know, why would you need access to that? I don't understand, I, don't, I really don't know why you want that, you know, getting in the way of stuff. You've got these countersunk screws here on most of the you know, most of the chassis screws. It's quite a nice feel metal. It's quite thick as well. It's probably three mil thick. It's quite good. Um, and then the motor mount here is positionable, which I don't like. I don't like how you can move it in and out because okay, that is good because you can add extra pinions, you know, extra teeth on the pinions um, and stuff like that. But it's not good if you've got moving parts, which is the motor is a, a very quick moving part. You know, you don't want it to be moving and sliding about. It seems to stay where it is and stay solid. I've got to say now I've moved this about a bit the grease has got around the gears and it's really really nice. The suspension is pretty pretty tight it needs I think it needs a bit of oil or something but I don't know we'll, I'll work that out. It's got the shocks actually have uh, adjustable uh, like screws in them so you can actually tighten them or loosen them depending on what you want. I need to stick, re reapply this is actually coming stuck. 
or maybe it wasn't stuck down in the first place, I don't know. The ESC is kind of stuck. The motor and ESC are detachable, so you can actually you know, detach those and put on a different motor. Um, apart from that, yeah, pretty nice bit of kit. I'll have to see how strong it is. It doesn't look like it's going to last two minutes, if I'm honest with you. It doesn't look very strong, but I mean, like, this is how weak it looks. I mean, the bumper flexes quite a lot, you know. The, you know that could be a good thing. I mean, it may take a lot of the impacts, absorb the, the pressures and stuff. I've noticed that the uh, body mounts are actually adjustable, so you can lower or higher them, whatever you prefer. You've got a servo saver. What else we got? Just a quick look around the truck. The, shock the shocks themselves are actually plastic, all of them are plastic all the way around. Um, that you can buy upgrades, I think they're about nine quid, and you get to stick like aluminium ones, and you can stick those on. I'll probably get those actually, but they're, they're only if you're in the UK, they're only available from the European store. So if you're buying this, buy it, and then think about buying another order, purchasing it on a different order, because it, it doesn't work together. You can't buy it from the same place. But yeah, it's pretty nice. I'll, I'll get a close up now. I'll zoom in with the camera. So you can see a little bit more detail on the truck closer up. So this is the body shell. Body shell looks like this. Obviously the decals need to be applied yet to it. And uh, the plasticky sort of stuff needs to be peeled off. You can probably just see it on the edges. So there's a little bit. And then obviously, yeah, once that's peeled off, it'll be clean. Okay, we'll zoom into the truck. So this is what the rims look like. They're all plastic, standard hexy sort of um, thread. Nice, nice rubber on those. Very, very, very soft. But that could be a good thing. I don't know yet. Okay, go around. There's the 35 amp ESC there. And these are the connectors I was telling you about. Is they're not. I don't think these are standard like nowadays. I think Dean's are, aren't they? But and Tammy and stuff. But. Even Tammy is fading away in terms of their connectors, I think. Because lipos are here, aren't they? Going around, you can see the battery compartment and the motor. And there's the steel spur gear in the second there, which I forgot to mention. It's steel, yeah. Steel pinion as well, not plastic. Bumpers and the mounts there for the chassis. Shell, rather. And clean to the motor nice and close. You see how shiny and nice and clean that is for now. <laughs> Standard servo, which I'm changing immediately. So they always break. And then if we turn it over, just turn it back into the light. And there's the bottom. Nice and clean. Very, I mean, I've got to say the, the quality of this is very nice. It's been cut in a, such a clean way and the, the design of it is very good. There we go. Okay, I'll get the shell on. And, uh, well, rather, I'll, I'll sort out the ESC, the electronics, and I'll get cracking and ca catch up in a bit. Okay, this is the servo I was, I was opening earlier on, or trying to just explain to everybody. This is the part number for it, so Hobby King 15298B. Um, you get a parts bag with it, so you can attach your whatever you know you got, and spaces and stuff, and all this servo saver things. Um, even rubber grommets to cushion everything. And this is the servo itself. Now, you can see what I'm saying, like the, the quality of metal on this, I've got to say, in the plastics is very similar to the, the Tamiya stuff. I'm sorry, I don't mean Tamiya, I mean Traxxas. Traxxas stuff, um, the plastics are very, they're like rubberized, almost, you know, like an indestructible plastic, when they feel it so far. Um, there's the part number again on there. It's a metal geared server, like I said, this is all aluminium here. It's a coreless digital Metal Gear servo, and I, I believe to some extent it's sort of, sort of like splash proof as well. I wouldn't obviously dunk it in a bucket of water <laughs> or dunk it in a, a pond or something and drive through it, but um, yeah, it, it's a pretty good servo. And that's going to obviously sit exactly where the existing one is, just here, like that. It'll go in and uh, be a valiant replacement, and obviously. It'll also match, that's why I bought it, the colours. So the, so the motor's blue, the ESC's blue, and so is the servo. Okay, it's a different shade, but still, it's sort of uniform, you know. And there we go. So, yeah, very impressed with that. That's, that's probably the, one of the best things about Hobby King. Some of the stuff is actually really nice. Okay. Okay, so I'm just finishing off my solder job now. So I've cut the existing cables, and there it is. That's the existing connector. 
And um, I've also obviously desoldered the other connector for the Dean's power connector. So now I'll be obviously sticking them together. Now, ideally, you want to get a nice, uh, clean amount of solder on the, the connectors that you're actually trying to you know, stick together. Because if you've got like oils on your fingers or anything like that, you're going to have problems sticking them together. So, first of all, just apply some to it and try and wrap it around it. So, like, grab some on here. You may, you know, some of you may think this is too much or too little solder. But I think this is about the perfect amount. So, stick it on there. Like this. And I just tend to gently wrap it around it. Until it goes around the entire... It takes a little minute to and it does get hot, so you have to be careful. So make sure you're wearing eye protection. And um, you might want to wear gloves or use a pair of pliers. In fact, I will use a pair of pliers just to hold this because it's getting really hot now. So just keep going with this until you've got a nice even amount going around on it. So like covering all of the pins, all of the little strands of metal. So you, so you can have a nice clean contact. Then when you're ready, ideally you'd need some heat shrink. So you'd wrap the heat shrink down there first, put it down it, put sort of the connection and then obviously heat it with a lighter and shrink it. Electrical tape or duct tape, anything will do, just don't let them touch, okay? So it's okay, you can touch now, there's no power going through the system, but once they're powered, you don't want anything, any power going through the system and letting them touch, because that's just bad. It's just not gonna be good at all. So I'll put that there. Um, and then just literally join them together. So. So then just touch the two together effectively and try and get a nice clean join. So get them get the solder nice and warm. Okay, so here's the finalized result. So I'm not happy with my soldering job there or the I'm having to use tape, you know, having to use tape to, you know, stop them contacting and shorting. But it's all I've got at the moment and I'll have to do. They're connected, solid connections I can hold, you know, pull on them, tug on them, they don't pull out, it's great. ESCs are wired through now perfectly anyway, but um, yeah, it's great. Um, there's my radio. I twisted the signal cable, which is nice and tight there. Got the aerial tube in. So the aerial tubes all... Okay, the aerial tubes here. Cut that to length. The metal geared servo is in now. That was a bit of a tight squeeze, that, to be honest, but it's in. It works fine. Silent operation, more or less. Very good. Nice. I've been playing with the suspension. It's uh, it's stiff to start with, it loosens up, it's pretty good. And that's probably a bit too loose, but it's all good. And yeah, apart from that, the battery's in. I've got a little 2,200 milliamp hour in there just to test it outside. I'm going to move this pinion, because it's slightly offset. As you can see, it's not quite level with the spur gear there. It's um, slightly, you know, not quite lining up by a mil or two there. I'll sort that out. Um, I've been over the whole buggy, checked everything's tight, I'm going to go for a run with it once I've changed this. Um, apart from that, yeah, I'll get back to you in a bit. No decals on the shell yet. <laughs> okay, so here I am over at Desborough Airfield, and that's in Northamptonshire. Um, here's the truck, ready to run. I've got a 3S LiPo in there, and I'll strap in the, uh, I'm going to go strap on the GoPro to the top of that, you can see the mount ready. There we have it, all ready to go. Good looking little truck, haven't put any decals on it yet, still haven't bothered with that. Just put sort of made and run, just see how it goes. And we'll give it a crack.
probably will lower the shell down a bit, but it's like a huge parachute.
getting stuck. So after the first run, we were out for three hours today, um, went to Desborough Airfield, which is Northamptonshire, um, right next to Desborough effectively, and uh, came back after running four batteries, depleting four batteries, LiPos, we were running two and three S's. Initial thoughts on it, fantastic, um, very robust, not what I expected at all, I mean when I first saw the quality of plastics I thought, this isn't going to last two minutes, you know, this isn't Traxxas. Haboa or Habao, however, however, however you want to say it, but it's lasted pretty well. I mean, I've, I've really battered it. You can see the bottom here is completely charred up and scratched and scraped and bashed. Um, the footage, obviously, you would have seen before this of it running. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's a good truck. It's solid. A few scratch, scratches and scrapes on the shell, not many, but a few. Tires feel a bit iffy now they've got all the tread on them still but like it's almost like the foam inserts have sort of disappeared or <laughs> disintegrated effectively there's like no foam in them at all by looks things there is but it's minimal or whatever it's stretched the rubber the i can report that the aftermarket steering servo that i put on there is fantastic uh, i have to say i was very impressed with that and just on the whole when I mean, the truck itself has performed really well uh, considering this is a hundred pound guys i mean you, you buy this you put a radio in it a battery and go and you know it's not it's not a 500 quid slash you know it, it's not the tractor slash ultimate you know it's, it's not going to win out any anybody races but it's, it's a bit of fun that's what i like in the summertime when it comes around and it's you know short grass a few jumps here and there it'd be great fun you know on gravel sand on the beach whatever you know but it's quick enough as you saw in the video it's quite fast um you know it's not it's not slow for what it is um, but yeah, I still haven't put the decals on the shell. <laughs> I still haven't cut holes in the shell. I need to because it is a massive windbreak. I took the, the shell off halfway through running earlier. And what a difference it makes. I mean, the absolute massive difference. You know, it's just such a huge parachute, this thing. Because as soon as you accelerate, you know, you imagine it, it. The first thing it does is it sort of pulls back. And as you can see, look how much lift there is there. You know, you can see that the wind is going to get trapped under here hit the shell, hit the roof, hit the back, and it, it, as you drive it, it effectively does this. It just stays like that all the time. Um, I guess a, a way of stopping that would be to adjust the droop settings, you know, adjust the shell height, everything. Um, put some holes in it, allow some air to escape. But for now, initial first run, it was fantastic. I've got to say, I'd recommend this to anyone. Uh, quite impressed with it, to be honest. Um, you got any questions though, drop me a line and I'll give you a hand with it. Um, I'll reply as soon as I can. And thanks for watching the video. I know it's a bit lengthy. It's been about 40 minutes, I think. But uh, 
<laughs> it was worth it. The truck is huge. I'll put it next to my other one. Would light in stadium 10, convert it to electric. It was a nitro HPI. It's just another one on the collection. You can see the difference in size there. I mean, look at that. That's a one, they're both one tenth. But the shell is huge on that other one. <laughs> Trooper is great. If you want a, tro a Trooper short course truck, buy one. More videos to come, guys. Please like and subscribe. I'll catch you later. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.